Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Eyes, your eyes Hello, how you doing man? My initial attempt, if I'm honest, was to stream this both on Instagram and on Facebook. But it never happened properly. It didn't go together correctly. I don't know why. So Facebook wouldn't, it would stream live on the MacBook, from the MacBook, but it was just a blank screen. Instagram was groovy to do the do the live stream on the phone. Very frustrating. Now Boston Chicky, hi Boston, and hi Christopher. Um, I think Boston Chicky, you know how to stream to more than one platform at the same time so how to i, I know you do because I've, I've seen you do it i know i've been watching you <laughs> i just i'd like to be able to know how to do it if it's possible to do it on the phone on the iphone to just make one stream and to have it streamed live to I guess only three platforms really that I would go for because YouTube at the moment I'm unable to um, do live video on YouTube I don't have that facility because I've not got enough subscribers but I guess Facebook Twitter and Instagram to start with that would be the three places that I'd like to stream because what I'm thinking is to do a live basically filming me making the podcast if that makes sense so you're not going to get uh, necessarily the sound quality that you'll get on the podcast because all this stuff is set and connected to the iPad and so Twitch ah well that was a weird noise uh, twitch.tv Okay, and does that that shares it with? Oh, great! Software update tonight, and will be installed. That's nice. Thanks, uh, iOS. Tiff, uh, uh, tick, TikTok. Sorry, TikTok. 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 That doesn't share to. Does that share to Facebook and Instagram? The TikTok you can only do isn't like small videos, like those short things. Uh, if there's one thing I don't do, it's one thing I'm not well known for is making short videos. Mm, not my thing. No, 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 no. Short videos. <gasps> I just remembered why I don't like doing Facebook streams. <laughs> Is because you've got that number at the top of the screen that's so low. If you gain 1,000 followers on TikTok, you can go live. Wow, I didn't know that. 1,000. One but isn't it all like little kids on there? I mean, I don't, I don't really go on there. I've... Um, I think I did look at it once, but I don't know. I don't think my audience are. Um, I could do live chat on there and graduate to three minute videos. Okay, this is this is. I'm talking to Boston Chicky, by the way. I, I forget I'm doing a podcast. Uh, hi, podcast listeners. And the reason I'm asking this is because 
Twitch. Christopher says you're better off with Twitch. And you can do that on your phone, can you? On the iPhone. Because that's something that, uh, for some reason, I can't get me head around the MacBook. Now, I know the camera seems to be a lot better on the iPhone. And, oh, it does. Okay. I'm going to do that then. Thank you. So, Boston and Christopher both mentioning that. John Kelly, John says, hello, Mr. Newland. Hello. Um, Christopher says, you can, at least you can on Android. Boston Seeker says, yes, you can. Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a look at that. Not now, because I've already started, so I shall finish, as uh, all my girlfriends in the past would testify. Um, rather too quickly, usually. Uh, so, Debbie Gall, Debbie says, hi, Jason. Hi, Debbie. Hey. Um, it's really weird. It's really, because I've got four people listening, or four people watching. And I feel, I feel, it's nice that, you know, anyone's watching, I guess, but it feels, it's like there's two parallel, completely parallel, not parallel, opposite worlds. So there's me doing this video, doing a stream uh, on Facebook with um, less people than I can fit on my hand. Like I couldn't fit people on my hand. But you know what I mean, there's like five people listen, uh, watching the video and there'll be thousands of people listening to, to this podcast <laughs> when it's when it's released. It's like, it's, it's not, it's just really weird because it used to be that way around. Boston will, will tell you, it used to be the YouTube videos where I was... Um, Dominant, dominant, you know, not dominant, dominant. I was top heavy with videos rather than podcasts. Although I've been doing podcasts since 2000 and maybe 2006, but definitely 2007. So I remember at the, in January 2008, being all excited because I'd reached 100,000 downloads on my podcast. Uh, that I had at the time, and I was like, "Yeah, hundred thousand downloads." Uh, John John says, "My name is Jason Newland, and will come." Um, well, I'm glad I, I have a a variety of different effects on people. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to be of service. Um. I had to take my glasses off because they were shining. There's so much, I mean, it's it's good there's light in the room and that, but it was proper shining. I just, if anything, it distracts me from what I'm doing. And you know what? Making the stream distracts me from the podcast that I'm supposed to be making. But I'm still making a podcast, but I feel like I'm not talking to the people listening. And I'm talking to the people watching. It's weird. I'm trying to get my head up. Um, and it's not the first time I've done it. I've done it loads of times. I just haven't done it for quite a while. It's got to be a good couple of years since I last did a live Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's got to be, I reckon, 2019 since I last did that. Because I've been doing these for th over three years now. Four years in March, I think it was. It will be. Wow. Uh, this is number 725 of the Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. I don't know if anyone's watching or listening that was here at the beginning. Boston says, I've D, I, I've D, directed, oi, don't make fun of my, my, my lisps, I, not ever, sometimes I think it sounds like I'm making fun of, 
like I'm doing a stutter, like joking, but I do have a stutter that comes on. It's like, like I can't get the word out. Um, and maybe part of that, there is, like, maybe part of that is because even though I'm, when I make the podcast, it's not live. It still is live, if if you know. It's still the conversation. I don't I don't edit the podcast, change around what I've said and edit out things I've said. I don't do any of that. The only editing I do on my podcast is I take off the very beginning, the bit where I'm <laughs> bit where I'm swearing, um and just like, you know, um do the volume so it just kinda comes in. And the exit at the end bit where I'm like farting and stuff. So I take that bit out and then I try and even out any bits that are a bit too loud. Try and get them down a little bit so that it's, it doesn't you know, pop and doesn't make too much noise. And then increase the volume a bit to the point where it sounds good enough but it's loud enough, hopefully. So that's what I do. That's the only editing I do on my podcasts. I don't, um, I don't, as I said, I don't edit it in a way of trying to make myself sound better. And I think that's evident because if I was editing my podcasts, especially the Let Me Boy to Sleep, in order for me to make myself sound good, I'm clearly not doing a very good job, am I? Boston says, leave the swears in. No. No, ah, uh, I'm, John says, great to see you live again. Thank you, John. Um, I do, I mean, I do swear sometimes on the podcast, but I don't, I try and keep it family friendly, if you know what I mean, which is weird considering some of the top, oh man, just drop the headphones on the floor. You know what, soon, it's soon going to be time to do a little blog, a little vlog, a Jason Chats vlog. Because I haven't done one for a while, have I? And give you a little tour, because I've got a new desk. In fact, I've got two, but I've only put one up. But my setup is... Actually, it's a bit messy at the moment, but it's kind of... I've got it all, because I had the MacBook there, and I've got all ready to do two streams at the same time. But normally, it's it's a lot tidier. So um, I'm gonna do, I will do a little vlog. I don't know why, but when I see Boston on the screen, it, it, it reminds me. Oh, Boston, don't go. Boston Chicky's going, everyone. Check out Boston Chicky's uh, YouTube. Um, go and add her on Facebook as well as Boston as in Boston and Chicky C-H-I-C-K-I-E she's we've been we've been like travelling partners haven't we Boston she's going to say she's going now I think she's probably working um, I can't always say what I'm in my mind when I'm about to when I think things but here's something that I found this is for the purpose of the video. But for those on the podcast, I've been tidying up today. I've been tidying up my flat. And it's put me in quite a good mood. Um, I don't know why. It's something about tidying. I'm not a big tidier. And it looks messy. It looks basically like I've just gone and found a dustbin somewhere outside and brought it in and just poured it all over the floor but I haven't Boston Turkey is it yeah it's Boston Turkey check out Boston Turkey um, Boston when I tell you a little bit of thing about Boston oh Debbie says I love that you speak so slowly Jason by Boston thank you Debbie I don't, I don't know, do I still speak slowly now when I do the Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcasts? I, I know I do when I do the hypnosis stuff. 
I'm not really a, qu a quick talker. I have my moments, to be fair. Sometimes I'm like, blah, 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 blah. you know, I'm just, um, I get a little burst of, I don't know, I don't, I kind of think of it, it's not that um, my brain doesn't work, it just moves a bit slower. Um, Debbie says, yes, except when you get excited about your stats. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, I can't help it. I don't think, I think you'd only, you, I think the only people, I'm trying to give an example of what it would be like for someone that doesn't do what I, doesn't do what I do. Um, I don't know, it's just, because I've been doing this for so long, I've been doing this stuff since 2006, so it's a long time, and to see the the podcasts grow in the way they are and to now be getting because i used to to get a hundred thousand downloads a year was a really i thought that was brilliant i was really pleased with that and now i'm getting a, more than two hundred fifty thousand a month um i had ninety one thousand downloads last week and it's just, I don't know, I'm excited about it. And I know that it's not very exciting to hear about. Um, and trust me, I, I tell people I know in real life and I see their eyes glaze over. They're not interested. They don't want to hear about it. But what am I supposed to do? This is all I, this is my life. This is kind of all I do. I do, I do other things and I go to the toilet and stuff. I'm doing that right now in fact oh this is just to remind you I've got this dict machine just gonna just remind myself uh, remember message memo remember to change my underpants after the podcast finishes okay so that's quite good to just um, I found this while I was going through my stuff it was in the cupboard and I I can use that you know because I get ideas and sometimes I can't be bothered to write it down and maybe I'm watching a TV show or a YouTube video or uh, maybe I'll be lying in bed thinking of things hmm yeah so I sometimes that might be quite good to have that video, that little dicta machine, and sort of just, you know, just to remind me of stuff that maybe I need to do, or something that maybe I can, an idea, you know, maybe an idea for a new podcast. Like I haven't got enough podcasts. But, but Debbie, does that make sense? Does that make sense uh, about the stats? It's just. I think if I didn't have any interest in what I'm doing, I wouldn't do it. Because there's not really, uh, over the last 15, 16 years, there hasn't been a lot in it for me. Um, there's been nothing in it financially, there's been nothing, it's cost me probably about £30,000, maybe £35,000 over that time to provide this service with all the equipment and the ongoing subscriptions and the online stuff and all the different things so it's um it's taken and also forgetting the time the thousands and thousands of hours that are put into it as well um it's almost like suddenly things are starting to i mean it's always been going quite well in a way i've got two people watching now it's me and you, Debbie. Me, you, Debbie, and Christopher. That's it. Never mind. We'll make do. We'll make do. Um, Debbie said you should be proud of yourself and your stats are interesting, really. 
Still sounds a little bit sarcastic, I'm not sure. <laughs> I find them interesting, but you know what? I did have someone say to me, oh, I've had enough of listening to your stats. They sent me a message saying, uh, I like your podcast, but I'm going to come back when you've, uh, when you've got the stats out of your system. <laughs> it's like blimey. I try not to, t if I do, t I might, I guess I do talk, talk about the stats maybe fairly regularly, but I try and keep it like to a minimum to, you know, like, well, this is what I've done. I suppose I'm trying to take you along on the journey with me. Does that make sense? Just some people have been following me. Still sounds weird following, but you know, they've been listening to my stuff for over a decade, some people. Hard to believe, but there are people out there. I wouldn't say the majority, I'm sure some people listening to this for the first time today. <laughs> for the last time possibly. You know, who knows? But I I feel that this is kind of like a a weird middle-aged man's journey and bear in mind I was quite young when I started this I was only 35 I was 35 I'm now 51 I and mean, that's just ridiculous I just can't I'm st I can't process it I'm really struggling to process um, aging and it's not like that I can't believe it. And then I look myself, look in the mirror and I go, okay, I can believe it. It's, you know, yeah, of course I'm looking older and, and I kind of don't care really in a sense. Uh, but I also do. <laughs> oh, Darby. Hey, Darby, we like stats. Oh, thank you, Darby. Darby Lee wants to be in the video. You can be in the video if you want. Um, do you really want to be in a video, Darby? Just check first that you do. But the thing is, because I'm doing a podcast, I'm not sure how the sound will be. But if you want to say hello, you can. I don't know. This is, I've only done that once, I think. Debbie says, well, listening to your stats actually keeps me awake. So there you go. I can try and add someone to the video, just, should we do? Carol, hi Carol, not heard you for a while. Hello there, hi Carol. Hi, nice to meet you, nice to see you. There was, I haven't done one of these for, um, actually, the last time I did a live stream, I don't know if anyone watched it or was watching it live, was when I was in Cornwall, I think. I did two live streams, I think, but they'd be on Facebook, it's, when was that, about two months ago, yes, was it September, um, probably July, maybe end of June, something like that, it was, yeah, it was kind of that time. Darby says it's all good. Not heard you for, yeah. Um, we can try and do a live thing if you want. If you want to just see. Let me just have a look, see if it works. Let me see. Uh, Carol says, yeah, I saw you in Cornwall. Hope you had a good holiday. Well, it was, it was a weird one. I think, in all fairness, uh, I was probably not in the best space in the world to be around people I'm not the best to be around people anyway I'm a very solitary person um, but Andre had just died not just that second you know I didn't uh, but it for like about three weeks I think he'd been he'd gone and I did need and all I was going on about was I need to get away I need to get away and I said it to my friend and she said, well, come away. I'm going on holiday and on Saturday. And I think this is on a Tuesday or the Wednesday. So she said, come with me. 
Darby says, I don't want to be in the video. Oh, sorry, did you not want to be? Um, okay. I, don't, I didn't know if it, um, too shy. No, it, it went on there. It, it came up saying Darby wants to be in the video. That's what it said on the screen. Um, and a thing lit up. You're too shy. I, I, well, boop, why, be, why, too. Hey, that's a flashback. Darby, don't worry, I'm, I'm shy as well. Um, am I shy? I've, I don't know, maybe I'm not. I'm pretty quiet as a person. I'm not. Um, am I? I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I needed to go. I needed to get away. But I think what I needed was to get away f on my own. And so basically, I went away with my friend. I thought, I didn't, I didn't know if I should or not. And then I thought, okay, I'll do it. She wasn't in a good space. She had a mum with her, and her mum was ill pretty much the whole time he was there. And this, it, uh, it just, we did, really didn't get on very well. Like, nobody really got on very well. There was a lot of niggles and nagging and moaning, and it was quite weird. There were some nice times, there was, you know, but it was a whole week. It was a very long week. And then, like, one by one, we all got ill. I ended up getting a cold. And then, so her mum got a cold and was actually bedridden for a few days. But on the first day of the holiday, the first day, on the Sunday, I think, her and her mum had a bit of a heated conversation. And it was, that was, I mean, it was personal stuff, but um, they took it public. They took it, you know, they started, like, talking about stuff. And I didn't really know what they were talking about, but it's just family dynamics and stuff that I'm not really used to. But, and then I got a cold in, I was coughing a bit for a few days, like, oh. And you don't want to cough in the current climate. You don't want to be in public coughing. It's... And then on the news, all we were hearing was Cornwall. The coronavirus is, is Cornwall was the capital of the UK of the coronavirus growing again. It was like, oh, brilliant. We're in a really good place here. And here's me coughing. And then I got a cold, my first cold in over two years. And it was just a cold. I did a corona test and it wasn't, and her mum did it, and it wasn't, you know, so it was just a cold, just a normal, common cold, and I hadn't had a cold for over two years, and it was so weird, such a strange sensation to be sneezing and coughing and all the other stuff that goes with a cold, and it was just... I don't know, I feel I was almost too scared to get a cold for the last two years. I feel probably my, a lot of people have been like that. And the journey home was just hard work because I was unwell. Um, our mum was starting to, I think, feel a lot better because she, she got ill at the beginning of the week and I was ill at the end of the week. Hi, Angela. Um, for those... I was going to say for those joining the podcast, but you wouldn't be. You do. You, I don't. Well, let's suppose you fast forwarded to this point. Um, the I'm streaming it live as I'm basically streaming the podcast recording live, and also for those watching as well, and those watching later after the record after the stream's finished. The microphone I've got here is for the podcast, so you're just getting the um, the audio from the iPad, uh, the iPhone. Does that make sense? 
Now, if someone knocks on the door, I'm going to end the recording. I can pause the podcast, but I can't pause. I can't pause the live stream, so I'll have to end the live stream. So, apologies to that, but um, I told you, I'm just just letting you know. It's not really that important, is it? It's like, oh my god, I can't, I can't handle things anymore. I was watching a live stream and it ended really quickly. <laughs> a lot of things end quickly with me. I was whistled, you hear that? Quickly, quickly. You know, someone actually complained years ago about me whistling when I talk. And you know what? That's what amazes me is if you could have listened to me, uh, Christopher says, who would knock on your door this time of night? The Easter Bunny. I uh, know it's just a friend. Sometimes we go for a walk. Um, I don't know what time of night it is. We go for, he walks his dog and I go, I go for a walk with him. Um, it's quite nice to get out, especially this time of the year. It's really cool, it's nice. No one around, because his dog doesn't really get on with other dogs. Is there only five people watching? Carol, you know what? I don't understand it. I mean, we all know what a superstar I am. How could there only be five people? But I, I've had at least 15 people say hello to me on air. So I don't, I don't know. I get a little bit... Um, it's not good for your ego, to be fair, doing a live stream. I mean, it's different. People, Katy Perry, you know, I mean, people that are famous, they'll have like hundreds of thousands of people. But it's like six. Melissa says, I just popped on. Love listening to Jason's live. Thank you. Um, uh, do, you do you listen to the Let Me Bore You to Sleep or do you listen? Which, which ones do you listen? Just Melissa. What podcast do you listen to? If any. I'm just inter I am interested actually in so I don't I do get some feedback, but not a huge amount. And it's nice, you know. Uh Debbie says, normally miss your live streams, big big time difference, yeah. Melissa says I just listen. Do you, is there any specific podcast that you like? The Let Me Bore You to Sleep, Deep Sleep Whisper, Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Um, what other ones do I do? I love listening to your talk and your ideas and some things. Thank you. It must be the Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Yeah. Isn't it strange? I know it's well, not strange, but the most positive feedback I've got on any podcast I've ever done is to let me bore you to sleep. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Debbie, Carol, Darby. Um, however, they're not the most popular podcast. It's not the most popular podcast. The Deep Sleep Whisper one is more popular, I think. Um, However, I do share the Let Me Bore You To Sleep podcasts on some other podcasts. And they're more popular on those podcasts than they are on the actual podcast itself. So, but they've grown. Um, I'm talking about stats again, aren't I? On the podcast itself, uh, the Let Me Bore You To Sleep, I used to get about 300 downloads a day. Or just on that podcast. But then I get like three... Uh, Overall, I get about a thousand downloads a day spread out over the different podcasts for the Let Me Boy to Sleep, I'm just bang the microphone, for each episode. But now, on the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast itself, I'm now getting five, six, sometimes 700 downloads just on per day, just on that podcast. Um, it's, it's weird, I just don't get it. I'm talking like stats again. Like, um, Krista says, have you ever been into ASMR? Love the pig piggy bank. Thanks, Carol. I, I literally just put those 
that bookcase to get, well not the bookcase together, but put all those books on there. And I realise as I'm looking at the screen, you can't see any of the books. You can see them, but you can't, I can't see any of the titles of the books. Um, but the piggy bank, my brother bought me that, my little uh, stepbrother. And, you know, it looks big, it is big. You know, sometimes you're like things are in the distance. Like, I'm like, is it, is it big? Is it close? It is actually a big old thing. It's, I reckon, if that was pound coins, or well, you could probably, yeah, I reckon you could put out five hundred pound in there. Maybe a thousand pound. It's a big old thing. It's never been more than about three pound fifty so far. Um, okay, Christopher, this is two people who ask this. Um, Christopher, have you ever been into ASMR? I invented, no. I used to do Whisper back in 2000 and, okay, pretty much from the start. When I did the relaxation and sleep sessions, I would end, so I'd get quieter and quieter and quieter, and then maybe end up like almost whispering. And then I started doing it more near the end, you know, about 2011, maybe 2012, 2000, 2011. I lose track of what day, yeah. And then, I moved in 2011 and people started asking me would I do ASMR videos because I was kind of already doing them in a sense but just whisper so I started doing it so like 10 years ago I started doing whisper videos and I'm not into ASMR necessarily myself but I, I do I do get a bit of the tingles um, I'm a very auditory person, not very visual. I'm visual when it comes to <laughs> naked women. Oh, that's terrible to say. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm na I've, I've got visual. I, like, I do like watching like a good movie with special effects and stuff like that. I'm visual on that level. But if dog just fell asleep, brilliant. I'm, I tell you, it's what bore my. I do have the most boring voice. It's, I was actually talking to someone last night downstairs in my friend's place and the bloke I was talking to fell asleep in front of me. He's like, right. and he was very tired, but I'm very auditory, which means that, uh, here's an example. I was I'm talking about women now. There was a, this is a um, lady that I met when I was a DJ and she gave me a number, I gave her mine and then she said, oh, um, we end up chatting like a normal conversation. And then it started to get night, like it was probably early evening, maybe, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock. And my room was right close to the next room. A lot of rooms are quite close to, together, aren't they? But I knew that they would probably hear me and I didn't want to disturb them because they were going to bed. I'd be up all night sometimes. They'd be going to bed because I had to get up at like six in the morning or something. So I was talking to her and it was just a normal conversation. And then I started like talking less and started whispering. And we were whispering to each other. And then it got, it, the conversation went in a very different direction. And it's only then that I realised that whispering was, that I liked it. But that's a, that's a kind of, I guess, an intimate situation. Um, not that interested, I guess, listening to people brushing their hair or uh, tapping and stuff. Um, but then I've never really listened with headphones to that stuff. But I know that if someone, 
uh, in an intimate sit, I don't mean like, you know, just generally intimate. You know, if someone's kind of just touching you uh, or a tapping on your head like that, you know, intimate stuff, you know, romantic stuff, like, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, it feels nice. This, yeah, I can hear it. It's like, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, For me, the things that I like to listen to that do make me feel good inside but doesn't necessarily make me feel... Um, it, it does stimulate my brain in a nice way is the sound of the weather, like wind... Um, the rain on the window uh, when I was a kid I used to really love lying in a tent listening <laughs> I do it it's weird um, everyone else was annoyed because it was on holiday and it was raining but I used to love lying in there listening to the rain coming down on the top of the tent so I guess that was an ASMR experience and it was blissful for me it was blissful because I guess there was no one else around because they were all out sheltering somewhere else but they didn't you know i think i just stayed in and stayed in you're not you're not really staying in when you're in a tent is there but you know and i was any social even then it felt really nice um if you're gonna do that though lay down in your own tent you know, because I got kicked out. It's like, well, there's more room in yours. Yeah, but, you know, go back to your own tent, mate. Where was your parents? Why were your parents? Why aren't they with you? Crystal says, I was on Lam... Lam... My, I can't even read the writing. I've got an eye test this week. I have. I was on Lambertrugine for bipolar and never got tingles. Now I don't take it anymore, I get tingles. Ah. I can't see what else has been writ written. If I, t if I click it, will it come up? No, I can't get to see what else she wrote. Um, I don't know. I mean, anything, that, any any medication, I mean, any medication has an effect on our brain. But then everything we eat, everything we say, everything we see, has, <laughs> everything we do has an effect on our brain, doesn't it? Um, but, you know, medication, um, yeah, it's going to have an effect. So I don't know. I don't know really... Uh, much about the side effects of medication. Ever since I was given some medication, probably about 10 years ago, and the first, and I, I, I looked at the possible side effects, and the first one was may, call, may cause instant death. And I thought, I'm going to stop reading that. So I don't read it anymore. I was like, why don't put that idea into me? Ed, what, why would you? Why? But that's just me. Um, Melissa says, lamb o Lamotrigine. Or Trigine. Trigine. lamb o I know some people, it's all Latin, isn't it? Isn't it all come from Latin? The, the words for the medication and stuff. Because usually you have a meaning. Well, I suppose everything has a meaning, doesn't it? Technically. I can't see how long I've been talking for. Oh, yeah, 44 minutes. Try Jean. You try Jean. Don't want to try Jean. Don't have to. <laughs> And Christopher says, <clears throat> I heard that ASMR is a kind of pleasurable seizure. Wow. Um, I... I 
I've never seen those two words put together, to be fair, Christopher. Pleasurable and seizure. I've never seen it in the same sentence. Especially not that close together in a sentence. Um, I don't know. Um, genuinely. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, no, I don't know what to say to that. I don't know. Uh, I really don't. It's... It, do, it doesn't strike me as being something that... Oh, okay. Uh, Lambertrin, it's, a, it's an anti-epileptic drug. Yeah, my one, my um, Depakote, or uh, I forget the name of it, but it's Depakote, and it's, that was uh, also an anti-epileptic drug. It's... Um, they realised that, or whoever, I don't know, specialists, with the people, they gave it to people for epilepsy, and they realised that they were more stable, you know, within themselves. And it was, because epilepsy is the two parts of the brain, uh, I forget the name of it, basically, uh, but ba being unstable, so basically the epilep epilepsy drug stables, makes both sides stable. That's why with some people really, really serious epilepsy, well, I don't, I don't know if it's any non-serious, but with like, that are having seizures all the time, they separate the brain the right and left hemisphere and the person no longer has seizures because they both need to be connected it's basically it's like an it's an it's like an electrical overload really isn't it um it's kind of like a like a power outage or power overload like a like the brain having an electric shock kind of thing um, it's, I had, I've seen two people have seizures, one at school, and then there was my friend, we was in, um, Bulgaria, and he had a seizure in the airport, just as we was getting, we were waiting for the plane, we weren't there for the food, we were waiting for a plane, it was an airport, that's what, yeah. I suppose it's self-explanatory. Um, but we waited for a plane. And he was just sitting next to me. And suddenly, he was on the floor. Well, he wasn't. I mean, he was still sitting on the chair. I pushed him on the floor because I was embarrassed. So I left him there. And then eventually someone came and... Uh, no, I didn't. I went and got a doctor. And I was... I, I panicked. I absolutely panicked. I didn't know what to do. See, I, I wasn't... There was people with us. There was a group of us. And I, I wasn't... Um, not really a first aid person. I'm more... Uh, find someone to do it. That makes sense. I, did, I didn't know what to do, really. I've had first aid training. and But the first aid training's changed. Because when I was young... Because I used to be in the Sea Cadets... We had first aid training. Then I went to college, uh, Catering College, had first aid training. Um, so I kind of had first aid training twice. Well, three times, because when I worked at a charity, I had first aid training as well. But that was more, that was like more recent, about what, 10 years ago. <laughs> well, blow me. Um, weird and when you get so old that recent can it literally be last decade wow wow anyway i i did leave him on the floor but he I, he was um i didn't push him off the chair he, he fell on the floor 
but we there was like a big I think about six of us so they would kind of look after him I was running through the airport like I guess I must have looked like I was almost like I was on fire but invisible fire I was like I must have been running around absolutely didn't know what to do and what I did is um, I was screaming is there a doctor is there a doctor I need a doctor and I was like no I don't need a doctor but my friend needs a doctor and I thought well I shouldn't be giving too much information out I just wanted to just is there a doctor I don't have to explain myself to each and every person and there was a doctor and he came over and he, he, he I'll be honest I don't think he wanted to get involved but he did and he just came over and then the security came out. This was in 2002. So security was, as Christopher just pointed out, what he's mentioning there that he remembers, uh, security was higher um, in 2002. Um, it you know, started to increase a lot. Uh, at that point and they were f originally they weren't going to let him on the plane and they did the first aid and they gave him drugs and stuff to calm him down and to uh, mellow him or I don't know sedate him or whatever it was and they said well he can travel and when you get to Stansted Airport in London, you you will be greeted at the other end by the security there, and they will make sure that you get medical attention. So there will be an ambulance waiting for you when you get in, because the flight from uh, London to Bulgaria wasn't wasn't a long flight. It was too long. Um, but it wasn't like a huge, what was it, like four hours maybe? I'm not sure, something like that. And maybe three hours, three or four hours. So I'm thinking, good, you get medical attention. And because, you know, anyway, because I was really, I was so really worried about him. And, but he, they strapped him in, sounds bad, doesn't it? They strapped him into a, a chair, I think. Um, and looked after him on the journey, made sure that he was okay. And he had a blanket and stuff. And he, when I say the blanket, it wasn't like his comfort blanket that he carried everywhere that he went. Where's my blanket? You got my blanket? No, mate, you're 30 years old. You shouldn't need a blanket. I want my blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't this blanket it was just a normal blanket that they gave him and when we got there there was there was no ambulances there was nout there was none there was zil or zilch I mean there were ambulances in London I mean blimey there's loads but there was nothing waiting for him now I realise it wasn't like an emergency situation, I guess, um, like someone had had a, you know, uh, it wasn't a life threatening, but it could have been, you don't know, do you? We don't know. Um, but anyway, he, he got no, we got there, and so I said, well, are you going to help him? They said, we don't know anything about it. So the, Bel the Belga Bulgarians, I think they lied. They just wanted us out. They wanted us out. So yeah, um, that was weird. And then, because uh, I wasn't living, I, I wasn't living in London, so I couldn't really do much. So, you know, I had to go to work on, I think we got back on the Friday or the Saturday. I had to go to work on the Monday. So thankfully I didn't have to look after him. 
and I didn't live there, so I, I, you know, I had to, I lived in a different part of the country. So it's very strange, though. The whole situation is really surreal. Very, very, very strange. And I think it was just. I mean, it's, this is this is not alien to anyone, really. I think everyone's been in a a similar situation. I'm sure. But to see someone that I really cared about, I don't like to admit it, but I, you know, I cared about him. He was my friend. And to see that he was helpless, and I was helpless, there's nothing I could, I couldn't do anything. Well, I didn't, um, I was just useless. I, 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 could, I don't think I could ever be a paramedic, apart from the fact that I'm, not paramedic or trained but even if I was I can't drive either but let's say if I had a driving license and I was a lot younger I didn't have a bad back and I loved the sight of blood I still don't know if I could do it because everyone's got their skill in life haven't they everyone's got things that they really that they can do some people can do different things. I'm still waiting to find out what I can do. I'm good at farting, that's about it. I can eat chocolate. I'm really good at eating chocolate. In fact, <laughs> in fact, I'm gonna have a Cornetto when I finish this. As a special treat. A special treat for the JJ. Yeah. I've had all the windows open all day. All day. Darby says ventriloquist. Well, I'll admit, Darby, my ventriloquist act works much better on the podcast than it does on video. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Because um, on the podcast, I haven't even got to have a dummy, have I? I can just. No one knows. And my, my close up magic on the podcast is superb on video not so much but on the podcast my close up magic not just close up I mean I could just do the most amazing magic tricks that you'll ever not see it's that you'll ever hear it's, it's phenomenal I can do contortionism I can I can do backflips. I can do amazing stuff on the podcast. Uh, you can hear me do some brilliant things. But on video, my voice nearly broke then. It's about time. On video, hmm. I think I'm just a bit shy. A bit shy. I think maybe I can't. I'm not. For some reason, my wonderful technique of close up magic, card magic and um, break dancing and you know, all those kinds of things dancing on the ceiling just can't seem to do it on a video but on a podcast everything opens up I'm not sure if that's the right word but as a sentence but yeah it kind of I seem to be able to accomplish more when it's just audio. Yep, Debbie says ventriloquist to to twenty columns. Isn't that the weird? When you think about what ventriloquists do, why do they give it such a hard word? I mean, it's practically impossible to spell, and saying it ventriloquist is you know. Anyway. Uh, couldn't understand him. He was eating a sandwich. Funniest podcast, Jason. <laughs> really? When, when was that? I don't remember doing that. Blimey. You know what? I wish people would tell me when I do something funny. Because I don't know. I really don't. Um, I mean, I've, as I said, I've done 700... This is a 725th recording. 
there's got to be some funny stuff there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know sometimes I say something that makes me laugh. Look in the group, we all wet ourselves. Really? All right, I'll have, I need to look in the group then. Oh, I've got an itch. There was one podcast where I did get a few people mention it. Something about a, a, a poo suitcase or something. I don't know, in an airport or something. Christopher says, need to dash, speak soon, bedtime, good night. See you, Christopher, you take care, mate. Um, Debbie's, you were in his stat. Oh, my favourite was, my favourite was a fart one. Okay, darling. 543, oh, blimey. Number 543, that would have been, that's last year then, isn't it? Must be. Michelle, hi, Michelle. Wow, number 500. I tell you what I'm doing. I'm in the middle of transcribing my recordings. I found this uh, website called otter.ai. And admittedly, I want to transcribe the Let Me Boy to Sleep once because I want to find out funny bits and see if there's any way I can sort of put a little book together or something, you know, some stories or something. But I've focused on hypnosis stuff. I've focused on the more serious stuff to start with. So I transcribed all of the uh, relax and relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety and um, panic attacks. So there's like, I think 127 of those. So I transcribed all of those, of those ones that are, but that podcast also had other things on there. Uh, hi, Belinda. Hi. Um, and now I'm in the process of transcribing the deep sleep whisper recordings. So I've now transcribed a hundred. Um, there's over 400 of those. So that is going to take probably a couple of months. Then I'm going to start to start working on the let me boy to sleep. And that's probably going to take to transcribe the 700 hours. Well, it's going to be more by then, isn't it? So I feel I get 6,000 minutes a month to be able to transcribe. So it's going to take me probably a year, if not more, to. Uh, hi, Michelle. Good morning. Hiya. It's going to take. To transcribe the Let Me Boy to Sleep, it's going to take well over a year. Um, the Apple not liking numbers in your title. Isn't it? Darby, what? The Apple not liking numbers in your title. I mentioned that yesterday, didn't I? But... That was like a, I noticed the the thing they were referring to was it was a pod another different podcast host that mentioned it and put me through to Apple because what happens uh, last let me yeah the last one what happens is a lot of the podcast apps. Where you can listen to well, listen to any podcast, but where people would listen, some people listen to my podcasts. They take the yeah, they take they get the podcast from Apple. Does that make sense? So, um, so they don't provide it directly themselves, and it doesn't come from Spreaker. Where my speak thing is, even though all of my all of my podcasts originate from Spreaker, and then go to Apple, where then Apple this then other people get it from Apple. It's it's a weird kind of system. I kind of understand it, but I can't be bothered to explain it because it's simple yet complicated. 
I think is um, I don't think I can explain it in a way that sounds simple that's why I can never be a teacher I don't also I've got no qualifications apart from a degree I keep forgetting that I do have a degree but I don't have any qualifications below the degree isn't it weird my highest qualification is also my lowest qualification. It's my only qualification. I left school with no qualifications. I got um, like uncategorized or whatever in every exam that I did at school. Like zero, I got zero marks. <laughs> I failed every single exam. So for years I was putting down that I did, I got a B in English and a, a C in maths and uh, I think I pretty much failed in all of them. I might, I, might, I might have got a B or a C in English, so I might be lying, but it's such a long time ago. I'm pretty sure I got a zero, like a, um, was it a U? What did, it basically just means that you, it was just nothing. <laughs> it's like almost just means like you didn't turn up. It's the same mark as if you didn't turn up. But I actually turned up. I don't know why. Why did I bother? I think the mistake that the school made with exams, and I still think it's a bit of a mistake, is to let the kids leave school. Like, leave, you've left. This is what it was like back then. So it was the fifth year of high school. We left in the April. We'd finished. That was our high school finished. Except for those that were coming back in the sixth form. Uh, and I wasn't. I wasn't invited. Um, you, you have to pass exams to get into the sixth form. Um, and I didn't pass any exams. But then we had to had to go in in June to do the exams, I think it was. Why did I even turn up? I don't know. I guess it's conditioning. And it? it's conditioning. It's like if you had how many years of schooling, what, 12 years of schooling or whatever it is, you're just conditioned to kind of do what you're told to do even if you're like me and a lot of the time don't do what you're told there's still a part of me does do what I'm told in a sense when I was at school so, you know if the teacher says well you've got to come in okay I, I thought it was the law so it wasn't I wasn't going along with the school I just thought it was the law I thought I had to do it like, otherwise I'd get arrested. That's what I actually thought. I was only 15. I didn't know many things back then. So... Hmm. Right, 68 minutes. And normally, this is when I say goodbye, because I've done my hour. It's like doing a shift, isn't it? I've done my shift going home now <laughs> I've done it it's great it's dinner time mm. I have thought about maybe doing a live stream of every podcast but I don't know in some levels in some ways maybe it would be good uh, and I can share it on f YouTube and you know I, mean, I can download it then put it onto YouTube for from that angle I guess it would be good but um, but there's also I don't know what it's like for people listening on the podcast because I, I'm see I feel like I'm not talking to the podcasters any like I'm talking to the video. Like I'm talking to YouTube, but um, but I am talking to the people listening to the podcast. 
But then when I'm talking about the people listening on the podcast, it's like I'm removing myself from... Hmm. We'd stay awake watching, Darby said. Yeah. Yeah, I guess... That is a good point. I mean, that's... Yeah. Mmm. 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 I had a friend who used to do that. Mmm. All the time. Not all the time, but he... Mmm. And it's like he didn't do that. It wasn't quite a... Mmm. But he'd talk. I talked to him. Mmm. Mm. It was like active listening, I think. It was so annoying. Like, if you're looking at me, or in my general direction, there's only me and you in the room. And you've spoken to me, and then I'm spoken to you. Then I'm just assuming that you're listening. Unless the television's on. Then I won't care, because I won't be listening to you, because I'll be watching the telly. But you go, hmm, 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 hmm. What does that mean? Is it a new language? Do the different mms have a certain meaning compared to hmm, hmm? I don't understand. Is it like hieroglyphics? But a verbal version? <gasps> So it used to be strange. I didn't really know why. I didn't know why. Hmm. That's when I forget on one video. <laughs> mm. I thought about doing the bedtime story time. I, mean, I don't know if anyone even watches or listens to those ones. Um, they do, I know some people do, but um, I don't know what that would be like. I don't know what that would be like to record whilst streaming. I think it would be strange. You like, oh thanks Darby. Darby likes them. The one person, I knew, I knew one person was watching them or listening to them. I knew. I knew there was at least one person. The actual post, the podcast itself has, I don't know, it's probably got a couple of thousand downloads, like, all together. Um, but it does, when I share it on other podcasts, people do listen. It, they, or they do get downloaded, they do get listened to, or streamed. I think what it is, is... We, because I did YouTube for so long, that was my predominant thing. And Michelle says, that would be awesome. What to do the, should I do that, Michelle and Darby? Should I do a, a bedtime story time? Jason's bedtime story time. I do that live stream. Um, record it for the podcast, but do a live stream of the podcast. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll 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 think of a a story and maybe it's going to be weird though because I think I'll make the weirdest faces when I'm doing those stupid voices. You know, I don't know. It's going to be. And also, what you don't see, what you what you don't see, um, on the podcast is sometimes I have to stop myself from laughing. I literally have to, sometimes I have to pause it because I'm laughing while I'm doing it. Now I can't do that on a live stream. I can, oh thanks Debbie. Oh. Everyone wants it. Okay, I didn't even know anyone was listening. Is that, more people said they want me to do it live than actually listen to it on the podcast. I can pause the podcast. I can't pause a live recording, a live stream. So it would be weird, but it, it, um, Debbie's 575, okay, let me boil this sleep, sleep, 750, 
Let Me Boy to Sleep number 575, says Debbie. Adele's songs scare me. 902 minutes. So nine so nine minutes and two seconds in. Adele's songs scare me. <laughs> okay. Um so did I didn't sing any of her songs, did I? Is that when I read out the lyrics of the songs? I think, yeah, blind. We're going back. Is it that? See, I can't even remember doing that. I can't even remember. Oh, it was funny. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I can't even remember, but you think that's like 200, what, about 180 episodes before I go. Um, but what the reason I I noticed because obviously she she did that Adele did that album and she did that song and then in the X Factor there was a young female and I think she was like 15 years old or 16 years old and I forget her name and she did go on to be a star I mean she went on she she got kicked out of the ex, not kicked out, but she got voted out. And it's the same year that Arthur James, or James Arthur, yeah, James Arthur won it. So I guess you're talking probably about, I don't know, I don't know what year it was. And it was the UK version. And she, one of her songs that she sung, she sung other people's songs, and by far, in my opinion, one of the best voices I've ever seen on any of those live shows. Um, any of them. She was, she was up, she was like in the top 1% point, you know, she was like brilliant. Absolutely love listening to her. She could hitch the, the high notes, but her voice was amazing. Um, but she, she, she did her own song one week. And it was kind of the same vein as, um, oh, I wish you well, and I hope that you've hope you're happy in the future, and like to a boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend. And I just thought, come on. I don't think there's one person, a human being, <laughs> alive, man, woman, or penguin, that would feel that way towards an ex you know in that close to it being an ex you know what I mean maybe in the maybe in the future but like not like so where's your where's your where's your boyfriend oh he left me for someone else how are you feeling oh I hope he's I just hope he's happy I just want, it's like, yeah, 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 sure, 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 yeah, 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 so that's, that's why I kind of just, and then I discovered this, some of her other lyrics were also kind of a bit like that, you know, Adele was like, oh, so I think she's, she's super talented, and obviously she's great, I love her voice, Adele's voice, and I was a fan of hers right from the start. Was it Chasing Pavements? The very first song she released when I first heard it and saw the video. Um, I've, and she was only really young herself, I think she was like 18. And I thought, yeah, this is, I loved it. I didn't know she was gonna become like a superstar, um, but she's done it in a different way. No one's ever done what she's done before just to release an album every maybe four or five years. Or every, yeah, every four years or so. It's, it's like, release loads of songs, sell millions of albums, have billions of YouTube views, do a world tour, and then not be seen for a few years. Well, I've never known anyone can't think of any superstar that can get away with that to get away with not being around so early in their career as well you know I know obviously 
uh, a lot of really f people like Cliff Richards um, I'm trying to think of some famous singers uh, Tom Jones or people like that or Elton John they don't have to release any new songs they you know they're always going to have an audience and they've got a loyal following and they can travel the world um, and perform and stuff I don't know what a point is so there's a point I just just a surprise that because there's a lot of if you look at I look at some people like what um, Bros a lot of really really big bands or really big pop groups that were huge for a little while like huge new kids on the block they're that kind of like bands where they're just like huge and then um they go away for a couple of years or for a year and they come back with a new album and no one's interested and they don't like what's going on why why don't why are you not buying me album i've only been gone for 18 months yeah, Adele goes away for years and years, like sort of three or four years, and she comes back, and every time, huge, huge album, huge sales, and that's something that she's got that she's got something special. I think she's amazing. However, <laughs> um, not sure about some of the lyrics. Just, I don't know, I just think it's really, just just that, like, wishing someone well when they just dumped you, like, nah, it's a lie. And then just sort of other young females copying, and I've seen, I've probably heard about five different songs, all with the same kind of sentiment. There was one in the last year or so that I saw, the same kind of thing, like, Oh, I hope you're okay. And like, what? Really? I wish I'd met someone like you when I was young. I never met any. <laughs> I never had a girlfriend that when it ended, that she wished me well. It's like, blimey. Let's stay friends, shall we? Usually, what is, let's stay friends it means I hope I never see you again. That's what, no that's what it normally means, isn't it? Remember once uh, I ended, I didn't end it, my girlfriend, she ended the relationship. Yet she still wanted to spend about three hours discussing it. Discussing all the things that I did wrong. It's a long time ago and I remember I was like an hour and a half in. And I suddenly realised there was absolutely no point me being there. But why am I sitting here listening to this? We're not in a relationship anymore. She just dumped me. And I felt I said, this happened a couple of times. And I think the second time, no, it happened about three times. The second time <laughs> happened five times. Different people. And I said, are we getting back together? <laughs> are we getting back together? Right, you dumped me, but now that we're talking, does, it, does that mean we're getting back together? Are you? She said, "No, no, you're still dumped. I'm still, I'm still going to go out with your brother." I'm like, oh, okay. Hmm. We well, carry on. Tell me about all the bad things that I've, <laughs> how useless I am. This is really helping my self-esteem. Remember once I just stood up a halfway like. What is the point of this? Why am I listening to this? I don't know, you've dumped me. I remember at one point, I remember it was once I got dumped and then I started comforting her because she was crying and she was upset. And then I left after, you know, after like making sure she was okay. And I'm walking home and I'm thinking, wait a minute. She just dumped me, what? How did that happen? It wasn't even being dumped, it's like, 
How did I end up comforting her? Uh, she done me. I should be right. Then of course I went home, wrote a song, hope you're doing well. You know, hope you find someone better than me, because, you know, yeah, yeah. <gasps> oh. I noticed that everyone's gone quiet as I've been. <laughs> might, have, might some people might have been um, like, "Oh God, he's on it." Jason's on a on a waffle now about random things. I got dumped on Boxing Day once. No joke, it just it really happened. See that? If anyone's everyone falling asleep, nothing. It's nothing more likely to send you to sleep than the stories of my love life. Seriously. Um. Uh, um. Blimey. Sometimes I write things down and I can't. That was too quick. What was too quick? I mean, Darby, you're saying that was too quick. It's not the first time that I've heard that sentence, but I'm just wondering. <laughs> oh, Debbie, you pretending to be a star, okay. Uh, um. So I wrote this down. This is something that, like, a little bit of um, wisdom that I've got to offer as I've got older. Just showing your paper. Yeah, that was my, um, that was the, the recordings that I've been uploading and stuff. This, this is... Some jet well, it's a bit of a thingy that was um, a bit of wisdom, not wisdom, but things that I wanted to pass on to the younger generation, which is growing every day. At 51 years old, wearing white trousers is an unnecessary risk. That's that's my bit of uh, bit of advice, bit of wisdom, bit of you know. Talking about farting, okay? Bloody hell! Right, I want to go. I want to go. Went to the opticians last week. I only realised. Should I see my glasses? A lot of work. You should, yeah, there is there is a lot. You know the bits that go on your nose, the, the, the plastic bits on your glasses, the rims. Um, I don't know, is it the rims or whatever? They changed them when I was in uh, the opticians because they, they fitted the lens back in for me. Now on sad, the last sad, last week. And I didn't only realise that they're putting new ones because the other ones were like, Dirty, but inside it collected a lot of kind of, I don't know, whatever. It's just, uh, that, those that bits there. Uh, they basically gave it a nice rim job, basically, just gave it a nice clean, cleaned the rims, and either that or they replaced them. Those, you know, the bits there, I'm pointing to them on the thing, but if you're listening on the podcast, the bit that, that rests, the pads, the rims of the pads. Um, they kind of cleaned them or replaced them. Uh, Darby says, but if you're going through menopause, I'm going through menopause. You know what? To be fair, I haven't, I haven't got a single hormone in me. There's no hormone. I haven't had any hormones for years. There's nothing. 
I mean, to get an erection, I need to have a pump. Honestly, it's that. I keep it clean and suddenly it just pops out. Oh God. I don't know. It, it, we're def <laughs> you, have to, you have to blow into it. Oh, I have to. I I don't know. I don't. I'm. I haven't. Um. I'm just gonna. Sh I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna shut up. Or what? Um. I mean. I. F it, the aging process is just weird. Isn't it? It's weird. Because. It's just weird. It's just weird. I don't know. I just don't. There's parts of it I don't mind. I can't think of any part I don't mind, to be fair, but I. I don't know. It's just strange. It's just the whole thing. The being invisible. So I'm pretty sure, like, you just become invisible as you get older. No one sees you. Like, I mean, you know, sometimes I'm waiting to cross the road for sometimes up to five minutes. Some people say, you know, shout out for their vans. It's a zebra crossing. Just cross. But, like, people don't stop. That's part of the reason I go to the, you know, someone said earlier, why why would you get someone knock on your door this time of night? Part of the good thing about going out with my friend to the to the garage or the petrol station is he's got a dog. And people are more likely to stop for a dog or someone with a pram or a little kid or something, um, which is a good thing, obviously. But if you're just standing there, it's like they can't see me. They can't see me. It's not fair. I used to be glorious. <laughs> yeah. Right, I better go. Hour and a half. Blimey, what's the time now then? It's got to be... What day is it? Sunday, isn't it? God. Okay, I'm going to go. Thank you everyone for listening to me. For watching me. Stream. Yeah, watch, watching me watching me live making the podcast. Wear white trousers, you'll be seen. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a distraction I wouldn't want to wish on anyone. And... Yeah. Yeah. So I've just got some visuals. I'm just. I do wonder though. So I'm not. I'm not saying it's an assumption that. Um, women do the laundry. You, you know, I'm not think it's talking about it that way. Okay, just before I say anything, before the next thing I say. But I wouldn't, and I've never lived with anyone. Never lived with a woman. I don't think I would feel comfortable having a woman washing my underwear. Because... How, how, how can you be romantic after that? After, how, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I just, sometimes I think, if someone washed these and saw these and put them in the washing machine, they wouldn't want to come near me. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um... But I do, I used to have a, a, land, uh, a laundrette lady um, when I lived in London. I didn't have her, she, she, she wasn't mine. 
but she lived around, she worked around the corner. She, well, she worked in a laundrette. And she's probably one of the people I respected most in the world because she just kept washing my underwear. She never moaned, never complained. I mean, she didn't give me cigarettes. I mean, that might have been to try and kill me off so I didn't keep coming in, but I, she just, it's like anyone that does that job and she didn't seem to judge me. She was always friendly to me. We used to have chats and everything. And she was my hero. Some would say we don't need another hero. But I say, Bonnie Tyler, for example, I say, we do. There's always room for another hero. Very nice lady. I should point out, I have a very clean underwear. Usually. I'm not using it. I had gastroenteritis a couple of years ago. Now, I had no idea what that was or what it could do. And I never want to do that again. I've never experienced anything like it. <laughs> um, that, that week, um, when, I was, when I was better, when I actually healed, it only lasted about, well, a week is a long time. It lasted about a week. I had to actually take I actually book a, a hotel, um, a restaurant table, okay, and take out both the washing machine and the toilet to the restaurant for a meal, just to thank them and to apologise. Basically, it was awful. Michelle says, "Is that because you don't wear them, or?" Um, no. I don't know, I think um, it'd be a bit dangly, wouldn't it? Like the the yo-yos, it'd be a bit... Because some trousers, like the seam, comes up quite high, doesn't it, with jeans and stuff. So you'd be kind of... The, the yo-yos would be dangling kind of on your legs, it'd just be weird. I don't, I don't like everything scrunched up, um, like in a sock, but, you know, quite like boxer shorts, but at the moment, I don't know what I've got, I nearly stood up to look, I nearly forgot I was on camera, because that's the kind of stuff I would do on a podcast, I would actually, I would stand up to have a little look, just to remind myself what I'm wearing, because no one can see, can they, I was just, wow. And I can't edit it because it's live. So I'd have to stop it and delete it as soon as I could. Blimey. Okay, I'm going to go now. Otherwise, I could be talking all night. And that's not fair on anyone. So <laughs> I'm going to go. Uh, oh, please. I'm having my breakfast, Jason. <laughs> Debbie, you having your breakfast? You could have told me that when I started talking about underpants. And the laundrette and gastroenteritis. I mean, come on. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you. Not, it's not been plenty of people listening, but I just want to say thank you because those that are listening, I'm, I'm watching on the stream that is on Facebook, you've interacted and it's been really good, the really nice interactions. Thank you for participating. Uh, Carol says the live podcast is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm literally just going to go. So thanks, Jason. Lots of love. Thanks, Debbie. Um, you're not putting me to sleep yet. Sorry, Carol. I'm going to go now. Um, if you listen to the podcast, it might be better because... I don't know. My funny face may be a bit too distracting. <laughs> So I'm going to say thank you everyone for listening on the podcast, of course. Thank you for everyone watching on the live stream. Um, if you are listening on the podcast, maybe let me know if you if you found it weird me doing it as a live stream as well. I don't know. I mean, I guess 
with people asking me questions on the live stream it it makes it a little bit more um, conversational I guess in a way does that make sense instead of me just doing my normal boring monologue about nothing blah blah blah, blah. okay thanks everyone um, thanks Darby Carol uh, Debbie, is so many of you, thank you. Apparently there's only four people watching, but I've had a lot of people have actually sort of said hello. Michelle, good night. I'm going to get my day started after this. Thanks for brightening my morning. You know what, Michelle, it's really weird, the idea that you're listening to this in the morning. It's like, it's just weird. I, I know that I should understand the concept of different time zones by now. I should. It's just, it's one of those things that just don't make sense to me. Um, it's just, it's like, no. It's like a caterpillar turning into a, a butterfly. It's like, no, no. You know what I mean? Just like... I think I do quite well considering that my education level is about a nine-year-old. My education... I do all right, don't I? Imagine what I'd be like if I actually read one of those books behind me. So I read it you about a year just to get through one chapter. I'm a very slow reader, don't you know? Michelle says... Monday morning also, that's the weird part. Wow. Well, it's a, it's a different start to a Monday morning, isn't it? So I want to say goodbye to everyone. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I might do this again. I'll definitely be doing another podcast tomorrow. I might do... A live Facebook post uh, stream. Who knows? Who knows? You never know. It might happen. It might very well happen. Okay. Take care. Lots of love. And remember, you know what I'm going to say if you're listening regularly? Remember to be kind to yourself. And I'm wiggling my finger. That's my finger. Um, do something I'm trying to think try and think of something you can do that will feel it will be nice you know if you're going to work maybe treat yourself to something to eat at lunchtime that perhaps you don't normally have maybe you know it's got too many calories normally like oh but maybe just treat yourself I realise as a fat man I'm not in a very good position to be offering dietary advice but perhaps you know do something nice for yourself whatever it is be kind to yourself that's the main thing so take care lots of love and goodbye bye 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 bye